All right, we're looking at this mechanism problem over here from this IEB paper. Um, they say that they've given us a figure uh, of a driver gear one and a driven gear two with a connecting rod AB. Connecting rod is pin jointed at A, that's down there, and uh, it slides with a groove through C over there. All right, you can see how they've drawn it out over there. That means that this point over here is not really a fixed point, it's uh, this is going to slide back and forth. Right, very important. Okay, uh, driver one uh, rotates anti-clockwise. Okay, so they've drawn that little arrow in there, showing which way it's going to be rotating. If that gear is rotating in that direction, this one is going to rotate in the opposite direction. All right, so just make sure that you get that down. Um, it says, use the given center lines to construct and draw the locus of the point B. Uh, for one full rotation of the mechanism. Okay, so the length of the rod AB is 162. Now they've already drawn that in. Uh, draw the direction arrow on the driven gear. Let's start with that. I'm going to take a pair of compasses and I'm going to extend them out just a little bit over here. And I'm going to draw a little arc over there with the direction of the arrow going in the opposite direction to the gear that is right. Okay, once you've done that, um, and then it says show all constructions, draw the direction of the error and show all constructions. Right, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to just break this up into the 12 parts. I'm just going to use some color here, just to helps you guys to see what's going on. All right, so I've got these construction lines going over here construction line going across here. Now they've been very kind and they've located it exactly on that 30 degree. Um, we can then take this, swing that around like that, do a little line going that way and a line going that way. All right, hopefully you can see those construction lines. Same story over here and you can see that they've been kind again and it links up on that point over there and well, that will make life so much easier for us when we're doing the constructions for this. Right, okay, let's just do that and that. Right, once we've done that, we come over here and I'm going to label that as point number one, okay? It is rotating round like that, so um, this point over here is going to move to there, so that would be point number two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right. Uh, don't start with a naught. That's just silly. Our point over here would be number one. And which direction is it going? It's going in that direction around there. So uh, that point is going to move to there. So that would be two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, 11, 12, going back to one over there. Right, um, what we do now is, well, you can see one connects with one, goes to B. Two is going to go to two, and it is going to connect with B. How are we going to get that B in place? What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my pair of compasses. Remember, this rod is sliding, so don't go taking this measurement over here. Um, this is, uh, I think, what will happen to a couple of people. They will take that measurement and they'll go, ah, oh, I'll just bomb it in over there. That's incorrect. Because this is sliding, that, that position is going to change on that rod. So you've got to take from that point A slide it all the way out to where the B is over there. Hopefully you've got a long enough pair of compasses and you're going to take it across to two over here and mark it down and that will be where the B will be over there. So that will be B2. So that would be B1, B2 would be over there. Right, I'm going to do the same thing with three, four, five, six, etc. I'm just going to take these lines coming up. There's three and take this and mark off where three is. Label it. I know that labeling sometimes takes a bit of time, but it's worth labeling. It will save you the, um, the problems. 
Note, I'm taking a line coming out from four. I take my pair of compasses, I place it at four, and I am already on that line. I don't need to look for it and label it. And I will do the same with all of these things over here. Number five is out here. Just going to take a line coming out from five going out there. Go to where five is over here. Mark that. Label it. Go to six. Take a line out. Place it at six. Mark it. Label it. Go to seven. Seven, mark it, label it. Eight. And out, place it over there, mark it, label it. Nine. out the way. It's getting in the way of my me being able to draw lines here. Nine. Draw a line. Ten. is a straight line coming out here. We've already got that. So I just need to take this, place it over there. There is 11. And 12. Right. Okay, once you've got all of those points, then the best thing to do is to lift that off the page, and then you're going to go like this. I like to put little dots in between those points that we've marked off, just to get the idea of where that curve is going. Note how I'm moving the paper, making little dots, little dots, little dots, in a nice curve, I can see I didn't quite get that curve as right as I would have liked to have. So you can adjust it with your little dots. Taking that around. There we go. B over there. Going over here. And this part I'm going to do as well. Let's get that in beautifully. This part in the middle of this thing is going to come around over here. Through that point 11. Going all the way to where 12 is. Once I've got that and it looks correct, it's going to make the small adjustments to the dotted line. Um, over there, you can see I need to just do a little bit of restoration work there. Just to try and sort, sort out all of the parts that are not quite right. And once I'm happy with my curve, I can then go around there, 
with a nice dark line you can use French curves um, if you want. Uh, there we go. Nice curve going through all of those points. first. And swing this in here and get this little piece over here with a nice freehand curve going around there. See how I missed that point. Right. There we go. There's the shape that we needed and that should get most of your marks. Cool beans. That's drawing the mechanical drawing. Let's just get that all beautifully centered over here so that you can see it beautifully and hopefully that will give you most of the marks.